Hey, how is everyone this morning? I see lots of you are chiming in already. Great. I'm Susan Smith. You are in my studio, Stitched by Susan. I have fresh cup of coffee in hand with a lovely blessed mug. Isn't that pretty? That's what I'm doing this morning. Black Cat is at my feet. And those of you who are sharp viewers might notice my quilting machine, Stella, is in exactly the same place she was when I left off yesterday <laughs> talking to you. Yeah, didn't get any quilting done yesterday. But um, our daughter and her husband and two little grandbabies are here. And so I'm soaking up the fun days with them. So quilting kind of comes a distant second, let's be honest, to the grandbabies. But I thought today we would chat just a little bit about batting. We've had a couple of days that we've talked about various things, uh, the value of using black batting on dark quilts. Um, gosh, I can't even remember what all the batting topics were, but let's have a quick look at who's chiming in and saying hi, and then we'll um, get going. Rebecca Holt, good morning. A little cloudy here on the Kitsap Peninsula. You can perhaps see in my window behind me, I have a super sunny morning today. Cheryl in the Portland area, Patricia in Alton, Illinois, Cassie in Ohio, Judy in Georgia. Great. Okay, I'm going to take one more sip of coffee and then I'm going to duck down and set it down and then we'll get on with the batting story. Coffee is so good. Okay, oh, there's lots more chiming in. Um, Deb Kelly, hard to be, hard to be live, hard to be left. Not sure where she's going with that. Pamela, Northwest Pennsylvania, Pilar, hi, Donna in North Carolina, Monica in Germany. Monica, you tune in so often. Thanks for doing that. Janice, I use only 100% cotton. What's the value in using 80-20? That's actually a great question. Let's talk about it for a sec. Um, cotton, each type has its own characteristics. And one of the great characteristics of cotton is that it has a little higher shrinkage level. So when you wash a quilt that has 100% cotton batting, you will get a closer look to the sort of old fashioned crunchy grandmother's quilts because they had, you know, four to 5% shrinkage too in the batting because um, cotton batting was more common then. So it gives you that crinkled, very traditional quilted look. The value in poly cotton is number one, I think it's it's more economical, honestly. Number two, the 20% that is polyester gives it just a little more loft and a little more fluff, which I personally kind of like. And I think my favorite characteristic is it does not remember the fold creases as well. So when you have a hundred percent cotton batting, especially in a new quilt, and you fold it for any length of time at all, even just overnight, it's apt to make creases in that batting that you can kind of never get out. Um, you know, washing and wearing over time will certainly relax them, but you know, say it's a quilt that you're taking traveling a sample quilt to shows like I do. I do not care to use cotton batting for that because the creases, it stays so creased looking where that little 20% of poly really helps that to be less visible. So it remembers those creases less well and I fold my quilts in different places and that all helps too. But the little bit of poly helps with that. Um, I suspect there's a little bit more honestly durability there as well. Cotton being an all natural fiber, you know, it, it, it's small. You know, Unless you wash a quilt a bunch, you may never notice it. But I feel like having that little bit of poly is going to add a little bit more durability you know, a little bit more, it can handle the washing and the hard use kind of thing. So that's one of the differences. But I brought an end of roll piece this morning. It just so happened that I ended my black roll for this quilt that I have loaded right now. So it's a great time to talk about these creases. I'm trying to get a really good example here. This is pretty good. Like that is so common when you get to the end of a batting roll, or if you buy your batting in, in pre-cut packages, you, it happens there too because it gets folded into kind of this long strip and then usually rolled up like a sleeping bag. Well, those inner circles are so compressed and uh, pulled in and then the outer rings are stretched out a little bit. So when you lay that batting out flat, you've got these areas that pull in so hard and then these areas that literally have stretches in them. And it's really difficult to take that to a quilt top and smooth it out. Maybe even impossible because it's just, it's just pulling in all these weird ways. So a couple ways you can deal with it. And you, any one of these works, you pick the one that's easiest for you. I think probably the very simplest is to 
open out that batting the night before you're going to work on your quilt and spread it out flat and mist it, spritz it with a little bit of water and that moisture will help it to relax. That is also the method that gives the smallest amount of visible difference. So there will be a difference. It will be better, but it's not a huge improvement. Um, next up on my list of favorites anyway, would be to use some kind of steam. So all of us have irons in our sewing studios. So steaming with an iron pss, 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 ting, will help, even if it's just draped over your long arm rails. And further than that, I have a Laura Star um, they call it a lift, so it's the little portable canister with the iron that has massive amounts of steam. And the Laura Star, um, their, their, their genius is that they double heat their steam, so it's actually a gas, not a steam, so it doesn't even feel wet, but boy, it reduces wrinkles in fabric, but also in batting. So if I walk along my, my uh, batting, also spread over the long arm rail, and blast it with some of that mist, it is like magic for reducing those wrinkles. But I know not everyone has a Laura Star lift, but let me throw that out there. Steaming is a great option, and among the steamers, that one is queen. Thirdly, and this is what I often relate to because it does the most and costs me the least amount of effort. And that is that I just take my piece of batting and I unfold it as best I can and then kind of put it back in a wad, but like unfold any creases that might be in it, especially if it's a pre-cut and pre-folded one, get it all unrolled and then put it in my dryer and put with it something wet. A face cloth is hardly enough. I usually do a hand towel and I literally wring it out with water in it and toss it in the dryer. So what I'm doing is producing steam and tossing those wrinkles with the steam, the heat in the dryer. And that's pretty effective too. Now I don't like to leave it sitting in the dryer and I don't like to run it for a long time in the dryer because I don't want to shrink it. So I really watch it closely. I just give it perhaps five at the most 10 minutes of steam with that wet cloth. And then depending on your dryer, that's what mine does. You know, maybe pull it out and evaluate. You don't wanna make the thing wet. You don't wanna leave it sitting with a wet towel on it. You don't wanna dry it under heat for so long that it is shrunk. Um, just a little side thought here. I've had people ask me, do you pre-shrink your batting? So if I pre-wash all my fabrics, should I pre-shrink my batting? Much like pre-washing fabrics, that is personal opinion. Every batting manufacturer will tell you on their packaging what the estimated shrinkage level is. And I believe for all the cotton poly that I use, the 20% poly, 80% cotton, it's about 3%. So if your fabrics are all pre-washed, then your batting is gonna pull them in just a little. And again, you're going to achieve that crinkly look. It's, it's factors coming together, much like you know our needle thread tension, all of those factors. It's kind of like that with batting and fabric too. So if you don't pre-wash your fabric and don't pre-wash your batting, you're gonna get a little bit of shrinkage, but they'll kind of all shrink together. So each produces just a slightly different look. You experiment with it. I tend to go toward easy and non-complicated, so I do not pre-wash my fabrics. I definitely don't pre-wash my batting. I don't really know any quilters that do, honestly. And then I just take what results when I use my quilt, when I wash my quilt. I'm happy with the results. So hope that all helps. Um, Gretchen, and there are more questions, I will scroll back, but Gretchen's asking right now, I've never used black batting, what determines when to use it? Strictly color. So this is the same fiber as the natural unbleached color that I typically use, so it's exactly the same content and feel, but this quilt that I'm working on here, you can see the quilt, the front is quite um, saturated, deep colors, and the backing has a lot of black in it. So if, you, if I used a white batting on that, I'd be apt to get the little pokies through of white fibers. And the last batting live that I did, I think day before yesterday, talked about that a little more. Um, the picture on the front of it, the thumbnail, has mixed battings. There's whites and there's cream coloreds and there's black, all kind of in a fold. So that's the one you can identify, and I talked about that a bit more. Okay, let's look back at some questions. Um, I'll try to get back to the beginning-ish. People chiming in, Connecticut, Ontario, Canada, Colfax, New Mexico, fantastic, Florida, East Wenatchee, practically a neighbor. Florida again, Windy, Oklahoma, Deb Kelly, I caught a live. Okay, got it, you were saying it was hard to catch a live. Now I'm catching on. Grant in California, Aaron in Ohio, 
Connie, miss you at the quilt group. Connie, I miss you ladies too. There's a group here in Spokane that meets on Friday mornings. And that's one of the things I've kind of given up to do my live and unscripted episodes because I always seem to be busy on Friday. Janice is asking, I don't understand scrim. Is it better than needle punched? Janice, I don't have a lot of input on that. I'll be perfectly honest because the batting that I use is needle punched, but I don't use the scrim very often to compare. So I don't have, I don't have a good answer on that. I would read up on them or ask people that use them because I'm sorry, I don't have much experience to add to that. Lauren and Seneca, Seneca, Illinois, Dana Schmidt, Waterloo, Ontario. Nothing better than time with grandbabies. I so agree. Cassandra, excited about the masterclass. Great. The black batting we talked about already. Cassandra, I have pre-washed Quilter Stream 100% cotton and I still get some crinkle. If I want minimal crinkle, then I go with wool or poly. That's true. They will crinkle less. And, and remember, I did say the batting manufacturers will disclose on the packaging usually what percentage of crinkle you can expect. You know, again, there are factors like the heat of your dryer or even if you dry a quilt or if you lay it flat to dry. They all play into it, but they kind of give you uh, what to expect, which is nice to know. Kim, ever double batting? Oh, absolutely. Um, reasons for double batting for me would usually be if I'm doing a quilt that's for show, that's for hanging in shows or for showing off quilting, and I really want that quilting to show. And in that case, I'll put something flatter, like an 80-20 on the bottom as kind of a basis, and then I'll put wool on top because it's fluffy, and that really um, accentuates the quilting then, that fluffy layer. It does make a heavier quilt, I don't find that it makes a stiff quilt. You know, again, there's factors that play into that, such as how much quilting or what weight of thread you use. Um, but the quilts that I do with my 40 weight, I don't find that it makes um, a, a stiff quilt. That's not my issue against it, but it does make a heavy quilt. So like to do a queen size with double batting would make a heavy, heavy quilt. So I don't tend to do it on my bed quilts. Okay, I think that about covers it for today. I'm gonna try and get this quilt done today. <laughs> I think this is, is it the third or the fourth day I've had it loaded? Oh well, it's not going anywhere. And the grandbabies do grow up, right? How does that old poem go? Something about dust bunnies go to sleep, I'm rocking my baby and babies don't keep. It's kind of like that, right? You gotta set your priorities. So it's grandbabies for me today. Whatever you're doing today, I hope you enjoy it thoroughly and I will be back again tomorrow. Um, I am doing these lives every day through the month of April. So join in whenever you can. Um, click the little bell under the subscribe button so that you get notifications. And I actually did forget to say one thing that I should say. And that is, today's the last class that enrollment is open for my freehand quilting masterclass. So this is a comprehensive online course all to do with the type of quilting, which you really can't see on this quilt, but what I call all over or edge to edge quilting. So same thing quilted from one edge to the other of the quilt, no stopping for blocks or areas. So in the masterclass, I teach just over 30 different designs, all original designs to me, talk through the details of how they're formed, how you move around a quilt top, what some of my favorite tools are. And then further, I talk about practice methods that help you to really rapidly elevate your skill and your control and your precision at your quilting machine. And thirdly, I emphasize the process of thinking through original designs. So you see an idea, hotel carpet, one of my favorite places to find quilting ideas. You see a design, how do you convert that into something that is continuous line or something you can move around a quilt top or something that you can remember, easy enough to remember and repeat. All those thought processes are part of it too. So that hopefully this is a springboard then for you to, you know, you've got 30 designs in your back pocket, but you can go forth and create your own original designs. So for more information on that, I've put a link in the show notes, but it's really easy. Sign up .com. And going to that link does not sign you up. It takes you to an informational page, tells you all kinds of details about it. Um, there's a syllabus there with what is in each of the six modules. There's some information about how it is released. So it starts this Friday, but the classes are not live. They're pre-recorded. So just the first one opens, becomes available on Friday, and there's a new one each week until they're all open. Then you have access for forever. So you can watch them on your own time. You can press rewind as often as you want to. You can go back and rewatch as often as you want to. And then in support of the group of students, and this is why I do 
enrollment at different times. Once enrollment stops, you know, the class is defined and then I spend some weeks interacting with you. So on a weekly basis, I do live Q and A's and I post the schedule for that. Um, so that you can come into it's a zoom meeting you can come in there and ask questions you can show quilts you're invited to join a private facebook group if you wish it's a good hub for students to interact and share pictures and notes as well so oh look someone's typing in the poem hang on let me figure out how to get this to show marianne matthews cleaning and scrubbing can wait till tomorrow for babies grow up we've learned to our sorrow so settle down cobwebs dust go to sleep i'm rocking my baby and babies don't keep so true true with grandkids too maybe even more true because time with them is is limited right they're going home on sunday so I can always quilt next week and sleep next week too. <laughs> so again, whatever you're doing today, I hope you enjoy it thoroughly. And I'm going to get back to having breakfast with the grandbabies and then hopefully a little bit of quilting. So I will talk with you again tomorrow. Have a great day.